Um, let's call a regular meeting to order at uh, 6 30. Um, first item on the welcome everybody. We have a visitor in uniform, I'd like to. <laughs> have to get you on camera. <laughs> um, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on September 12th, 2023, and a joint board of select and board of finance meeting, special meeting held on September 12th, 2023. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting held on September 12th, 2023, and the joint board of finance, board of select and special meeting minutes held on September 12th, 2023. Thank you. Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay, next item is audience of citizens. We have a bunch of citizens here. Anybody want anything? Well, great. <laughs> well, that's not great. I'm to make sure that I saw it. Um, this is a good opportunity for us to introduce. I don't know who we have here, but we have an Eagle Scout, I think. Uh, working at my Life Scout for the 15. Great. It's a good job. Now you can introduce yourself to this. That's fine. There you go. Now we go. Hi there. You go to our Life Scout, 313 Chester, Deep River, and Texas. My name is Logan Parker. Logan Parker. I am working on the communications merit badge, and uh, one of the requirements is to attend a public meeting. So. Excellent. Well, well, thanks. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And good luck with that bet. Thank you. Okay. The next item come up. We need to make a correction. Somehow this slipped by. It's not, these appointments are not for the River Sustainable Committee. Okay. They are for, in fact, the selectments ad hoc um, waste reduction committee. So you could uh, make a motion to correct that. I make a motion to um, adjust or yeah, uh, item four to um, appointments to the ad hoc selectman's ad hoc waste reduction committee instead of the deeper sustainable committee. Uh, can I... Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor. Okay, we have two after last week's um, which I think was a pretty successful um information session held upstairs. We had two two members from the audience who requested that they be placed on that committee, Anthony Joya and Dorothy and Michael. Attended both very interested in trying to help out with this. I will make a motion to appoint to the Selectman's Ad Hoc Waste Reduction Committee, Anthony and Joya. And Dorothy and the Michael. I will second that. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Right, thank you. Okay. Next up is a uh, discussion of possible action regarding the land trust acquisition. Tony Bullock from the Planning and Zoning Commission and Lori Giannotti from the um, Land Trust here today. But smile. No, 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 it's okay. No, okay. You know, we'll never this unless you want to. Yeah. No. Let me introduce you first. <laughs> no. uh, Lori and I met today with uh, with Jay Marsh to try to iron out some of the details of how we what we have to do. But just to bring everyone up to speed, um, there's a piece of property over on Rattling Valley Road that we've talked about already. Mm -hmm. um, you want to see? Small piece that's going to connect. Actually, it's, it's really close. It connects. Um, the, uh, the okay. land trust holdings that go all the way from Essex Street, so really from Pratt Cove, all the way over to into Essex, because that this one property will not connect all of that contiguous land mm. to um, the name of the park. It's escaping me. Well, Canfield. 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 Um, so it's really cool. So, it's actually perfect timing because the Planning and Zoning Commission has finally begun to, to utilize um, something that we've spoken about at this yeah. session mm -hmm. to uh, utilize the uh, uh, payment in lieu of uh, open space um, for some of their subdivision applications. 
As a result of that, we, we now have a, a special fund that's set up by statute uh, for open space acquisition. We have um, this property came up for sale on land trust and planning and zoning. Both of these two um, very active in pursuing that have negotiated a purchase and that, that closing is approaching. What we need to do in order to utilize that fund is we need to go to the bring to the town, to the town meeting to vote. So what we're what I'm proposing is um is the, the total purchase is uh, eighty thousand dollars. We have grants from Gateway Commission and from the Middlesex Fund um, that total thirty five thousand dollars. So I'm proposing that the town um, take or uh, authorize. The purchase of the property number one, then the spending of fifty-five thousand dollars, and then um, also to release to authorize the release of taxes because of the timing on this. The taxes are paid up right now, but um, on October first, it will be it will become due because it's still on private. So I'm going to ask, I'm hoping anybody who agree we yeah. ask the town to forgive the taxes that will come due in July. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what they're going to put that answer to, but I think it's uh, a little over a thousand dollars. A little thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It's 45. And yeah, I was just going to make it. It's 45 times 55. Um, no, I'm asking for 55,000 so that we can, in fact, or no, you're right, you're right, it's 45,000. So yeah. yep. we need that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Forty-five. That's correct. Um, including that, and that, and I'm going to actually talk with the attorney a little bit more. Um, so we probably ask for somewhere in the vicinity of up to fifty thousand in case there are any closing costs and things like that. that are going to so um, we need to. <laughs> Bring that to the board of compliance, mm -hmm. and then we'll, and then we need to um, put a motion that this goes to town meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can go at that two ways. Mm -hmm. We can stay in session, wait until after the board of finance yeah. meeting, and then uh, and recommend that it goes to town meeting. Or I think that we can kind of supersede that, or not supersede, but go around that um, that staying in session thing. And the confusion that may or may not come from the <laughs> motion later on, right? And actually make the motion to bring this to town meeting as soon as we can, contingent upon authorization from the board of finance or agreement from the board of finance. Okay. Yeah. I don't see that as any problem. It's it's not coming out of any tax money. Right. This is money that can claim as as payment from a person who would a developer would have some and properties rather than <laughs> rather than contribute open space land. That's not contiguous to anything and not going to be of any use to the public. This is a good way for us to build up a fund that can, in fact, um, you, be utilized to acquire additional open space for things exactly like this. So we can have a contiguous piece of property that runs from uh, all, the way, all the way from the yeah. river into Essex. Um, and it's really some spectacular walking. So. Is, that, is there an address for that piece of property? Yep, it's 136. Round down the road, right? It's two and a half meters. Well, I was just going to say if there were, and if I missed anything or if I said anything that wasn't quite right, if there's anything you all want to add, now's a great time. Um, I would I would just add that um, not only the obvious reasons for purchasing this, the making the connection between the two pieces of open space, but also this. Um, first time using the fund is a big deal to the land trust that we are working on the collaboration with the town. We've also brought in the Gateway Commission. Jared Roberts is here and has been very helpful in the sidewalks with us. We've partnered with the Essex Land Trust and gotten together with them and gotten advice from them on how to make it work. We've we even got recommendations from them on grants to pursue and we were successful with one of those um, to get another $15,000 toward the purchase of this. So, I mean, in my view, this is a, a really pretty impressive collaboration. Yeah. And I think that we can all be proud of that. 
and it, and it's a good way for us to for us to do business with regards to open space protection going forward. So absolutely, I second that. I love the collaboration yeah. between the gateway yeah. and. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to say, as Deep River Gateway Commission and the whole commission is so, so behind this. Mm -hmm. And for all those reasons, and it's what a great collaboration between zoning, town hall, us, you folks. Um, this is the way things should happen. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really good. And, and, you know, we hope that they get support to the fullest extent that anybody's willing to support them because it's a great cause. Yeah. I would also just add that that uh, Pratt Cove is what we're protecting here. The, the headwaters for Pratt Cove, which is part of our, um, it's part of the national international heritage site for tidal wetlands, mm -hmm. and the water quality there is is very important to not only Deep River but everybody and all the species that usually control um, the Nature Conservancy property of the lake abuts Pratt Cove on the side adjacent to our preserve down here so if this whole ridge is protected so it's nice. um, yeah nice. pretty special yeah very nice anything else i was just gonna one, one last thing is that it, this has been uh, interconnection interconnectivity of uh, open space has been in the planet conservation development since we first started yeah and uh to me i think to make this connection is fantastic I think when I first met Lori, then I was like, we have to get this property. <laughs> so we've been, we've been waiting for this for you, so it's, it's exciting. So, yeah. That's what I got. Yeah, I like it. I like the cooperation. Everybody gets involved. That's just the way it should be. That's yeah. so efficient. Be. Well, I, I can make a motion to, I would like to make a motion that. Be be ready. Ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> make a motion that we move to town meeting. Okay, move to town meeting the acquisition. The acquisition. The spending of the funds to acquire. The town needs to agree to acquire to acquire. Needs to authorize the funds. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> right. that's exactly right. I had my own different notices. Obviously the same thing with George. I'm gonna make a motion that we've sent it to town meeting contingent upon board of finance agreement. Um that the, the, Town authorized the town authorized the acquisition of 136 uh, Rattle Road to authorize the expenditure of up to fifty thousand um, dollars to cover the purchase and the any any um, acquisition costs that might be uh, related to that purchase and that we authorize the release of taxes for the town release or forgive any taxes. Do that will, will become due in July of 2024. My second motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. That was that's a really um, a positive thing. And all the things that, that you guys said are something that I'm very excited that we were able that you all were able to to make happen. Um, I think it's important for people to see the cooperation between the various groups within the town and the, and whatnot. Um, it's, I think it's, I've always said it's very important that all the commissions and the committees and all that don't have their own little thieves. They have, they need to communicate. This is a perfect example yeah. of all that coming together. So I commend you. Thank you. Great. Good job. All right. Tony, you can go. Go <laughs> <laughs> You mean go like outside, right? <laughs> uh, all right. Next item up on the agenda is, uh, tax refunds from the tax collector. Um, this month we have uh, six refunds that total $729.97. And I make a motion that we authorize tax refunds, six of them totaling $729.97. Um, I'll second that, all those in favor? Okay. That's our agenda. We don't need to stay in session to we move to no. and find our authorization. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn at 648. All right, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. The motion to the meetings. Good evening, everyone. This is the regular September 
2023 Board of Finance. Now, for those who are curious or would like to know, yes, uh, September 26th is my mother's birthday. We can have it. And my daughter's let us uh, uh, to call for the first item on our agenda is the approval of minutes of two faculty meetings. This is great we don't have our July meeting here, but uh, who am I to say? Uh, so I need a motion to accept. If you remember the special meeting, for August the 27th, we moved that a $500,000 financing was a good town meeting and that uh, uh, open space. Uh, is that the open space? Mm -hmm. No, at the uh, at the August 22nd, we approved and went to uh, that okay. goes to a town meeting for right. $150,000 with the uh, town roads. Uh, and at the <laughs> September 12th meeting, we approved an additional hundred fifty-two thousand dollars to be used by the school, which we will approve at a special town meeting, and fifty thousand to recognize the town's obligation to the grant playground. All of those will be addressed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. With, with that summary, since it's been a while, would anyone make a motion to approve the bill? So move for the correction. Okay. So in the special meeting, the very last statement I have in front of me says that I moved and somebody seconded or vice versa the board is selecting minutes. So <coughs> I let you know to make sure that we have a correction in place that it was actually approved before the party was. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Finance okay. approved. Um, Not the board. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I got a first. Go ahead and second. Second. All those in favor of the minute, please down. Hi. Who seconded that? Me. Carmel. Okay, Carmel, thank you. And I want to I'm gonna ask you then. I am happy to do it, but um since Joyce is not here, you don't have a recording secretary. I forgot to mention that before. I don't know if one of you wants want to do your minutes to, today, or if you would like me to keep them. Um I, I'm more than happy to allow you to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for the um, that was a stupid question. <laughs> I know I didn't, I didn't catch that. Well, well, and there's comparative advantage. You have been keeping minutes before you have far more experience. <laughs> <laughs> you should let those with skills go with those who have got the skills. Well, the uh, audience citizens next. Tommy, who is uh, impaired, and we understand, <laughs> and uh, is eager to return to a safer, safer place. Tom, we're going to move Tom to the center. Yes, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to move things along. Um, actually, you have two reports. Uh, one from August, even though we didn't have an official, official meeting in, in August, uh, I did it before anyway, and by September. So just taking a look at the September report, uh, we're down the two million three hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred thirty dollars from last month. Uh, a lot of that is really from the general fund because uh, we uh, the general fund is down at a million one twenty-two thousand uh, two seventy-six this month, uh, and uh, a, lot, a large, really recent for that. We get a lot of uh, payables that uh, have cleared. Uh, the, uh, uh, Liberty had actually increased their rates from three and a half percent to four and a half percent, and that was done in June. And I'm, I'm constantly in, in touch with Melissa Fur from uh, Liberty. She's the vice president of the government banking division, and uh, she's been great. And Liberty's been great. You know, that's our hometown bank here. Uh, the the one rate that you'll see on three percent. That's the capital improvements borrowing. Now we can't exceed three percent by law. Um, the reason that those are money, so actually from loan proceeds. So it's like a holding account until the uh, disbursements are are, are made. Uh, so right now that the, that was uh, from Dime Bank that loan for a million four twenty five back in June eighth two thousand twenty two, and that balance is now a million forty eight thousand four eighty five. Um, a couple of things have happened. Uh, I was in, in touch with uh, Heidi Samuelson from Guilford Savings Bank. Uh, I've known Heidi uh, 
back in my banking banking day. <laughs> and uh, and I want to thank uh, Carol Hanover because Carol was the one who suggested that uh, Heidi Heidi call me. So we've done, we've done a lot of talking. She came up with uh, uh, pricing, and I think does everyone have uh, does everyone have this? If not, I I don't. I'm not yeah. there to talk. So you got one. Mike, do you have? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Sure. Um, a couple of things happened. We actually, uh, Angus, myself, and uh, Peter Lewis uh, sat down Monday, and we discussed about uh, maybe getting some interest for the uh, WPCA checking. It's right now it's just in a non-interest-bearing checking account. Uh, what I did over the last year, I just uh, looked at their balances and took an average balance uh, from the WPCA and it averaged about $485,000 uh, a year. Uh, so in this proposal, depending on if, if we did anything with the Open Savings Bank, but it's, if it's if it's uh, $2 million or $3 million, uh, that would depend on you know, what kind of uh, uh, rate they would uh, they would get and how much interest they, they would get. So for the heck of it, I just did, based on two hundred thousand dollars at four and a half percent, they would get uh, nine thousand dollars a year in interest, and that would be seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. Um, if we up that to, uh, if we we kept it, uh, we went to uh, uh, four point seven five percent, that would be nine ninety five hundred dollars in interest for like a uh, year and seven ninety one sixty seven a month. If we went to three hundred thousand, uh, it would be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars a year, and eleven hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. And all, and if we went to uh, three hundred thousand at uh, uh, four, uh, so let's see here. Okay, three hundred thousand uh, dollars at the four point seven five rate. It would be fourteen thousand two fifty and eleven eighty seven uh, fifty a month. Uh, they also offered. A three month or six month CD uh, at 4.75 to 2 million and 5% for three months. So uh, Pete uh, was going to actually uh, talk to his board of directors to see if, uh, you know, to see what their, their interest would be. I know, Bud, you're on that, so, you know, board two. And so to come up with a decision, you know, I just want to try to get back to uh, Heidi uh, as quickly, quickly as we can. Um, and having said that, if, if you're looking at the pricing, uh, originally they gave us a $4 million amount and she brought that uh, threshold down to $3 million and said, we, you know, I will honor, uh, honor the, 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 uh, the uh, what happened at $4 million rate to, to $3 million. So if we put $2 million in a money market account at 4.5%, we'd get $90,000 a year. Or ninety five hundred dollars a month. If we put it in at uh, uh, three million dollars at four point seven five, uh, the annual uh, the annual rate or the annual uh, interest would be uh, one forty two five, eleven thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars a month. Mm -hmm. We if we did CDs, if uh, if we get a two million dollars CD <laughs> four point seven five for three months. We'd get uh, ninety ninety five thousand dollars a year, but for the three months we'll get twenty three thousand seven fifty. And for um, we did it at uh, three million dollars for five five percent, that would be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And uh, but uh, thirty seven thousand five hundred for three months, or seventy five thousand dollars for six six months. So uh, this certainly look what we're trying what I'm what we're trying to do. I'm trying to do is. Uh, Diversify, uh, mm. diversify our, our uh, portfolio because right now we're very heavy with uh, Liberty Bank, which has been great. You know, you know, it uh, charges any fees or, or whatever. But uh, if I'm looking at um, how much we have with Liberty right now in, in ten accounts, we have over ten million dollars, ten million six hundred nineteen thousand. You see, our our total balance is eleven thousand eleven million five thirteen. And we have uh, four accounts with Citizens Bank, which includes our general fund account, and we have three small accounts with Essex Savings Bank. So um, 
I, I personally, if we, if we did the three million dollars, which I feel very comfortable with, uh, I've always uh, tried to stay liquid. Uh, mm-hmm. But if people think we can put it into a CD for you know a three month or six month period of time, certainly uh, open open to that. But uh, you know, I do like uh, keeping keeping monies as liquid as we can in case something something came up. Uh, so I think it was a, a very good proposal that they, they came up with. And I, again, I thank you for referring uh, her to, to us. Uh, Did you take this to Liberty and ask them if they could catch it? Well, I don't, you know, um, you know, I don't want to do that, you know, go back and forth, back and forth. They're, they've been very good in this particular. And I'm, we're trying to diversify too, Jack. We're trying to, uh, you know, probably take some monies out and put it somewhere else. I feel very comfortable with uh, the banks that we're dealing with because they're local banks. Uh, and 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 actually, if we go with three million dollars, we're going to get more than uh, yeah, we're going to get more than what what they're paying mm-hmm. now. So I I thought about that as well, Jackie. You know, just seeing about matching. But I think to Tom's point, I I, I agree. I've been saying for for a while now that I'd, I'd like to get a little more spread out. And Guilford Savings Bank is one of the top three banks in the state right now. Um, I'm very confident they're secure. They're, they're about as local as we can get mm. uh, here right now. Um, I think they've got an office in Essex. I know they have one in Sabre. Um, not sure about Essex now that I think about no, it. No, Sabre and Main. So um, <clears throat> I, I, like, I like the idea. I'm, I'm a very loyal type person. Liberty has been very good with us. But they do have a, a sizable chunk of our money. Right I think that. I think it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor, and we can get that into the quarter. Um, you said this is a dispersion account, or will we still use Liberty as a dispersion What will you pay bills with? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the general fund account. That's Which still, is Liberty? Li- no, that's just it's, 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 So what you're talking about is just a holding account, right? Not well, it's just if I would, you know, I'd probably take the, the $3 million out of our municipal suite money mm-hmm. market account that we have that has over $8 million. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and you'll have to periodically move it back. When you yeah, we can, you know, uh, you can certainly make uh, wire transfers. It would be the same thing with, uh, with the water pollution control. We just take money and put it into an account. And then, uh, depending if you want to, you know, you want your money market account, which is liquid, or if you want to see it, but we can, you know, if we can do wire transfers. So when you, know, when you, see, you need some money, and just you know, into that checking account. Will they charge charges for wire transfers? We have never ever charges us for any wires. Um, I will. I will have to check the bill for them. Yeah. Gen- generally, yeah. wires are like ten dollars. Ten dollars. Next about what you think. <laughs> oh, it has, and it's a. Uh, well, I mean, I see when you have a balance, we do. We would have a yeah. lower fee. Yeah, in fact, as like I said, Liberty Bank doesn't charge us for anything. It doesn't charge us for warrant grants? No. In fact, I, I just, uh, they just they just sent me a couple of statements uh, that show that they had to charge $10 fees for wires. There's like four of them. So I, I have to go in and get those rebates back to this. But, so, you know, I think, um, you know, I don't know when we can meet with the, uh, Excuse me. When we can meet with the uh, water pollution control, they're meeting on Thursday. Are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's something like we're supposed to. Am I supposed to be? You should have gotten a notice of that, but um, if, Tom, if you want to come, it's it's a great idea. I think it's going to be a ten minute meeting. I think we're going to see how I get out. Well, yeah, see how you Yeah. Okay. Or, any idea what time that would be? I don't. Okay. I, I I just heard about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, Tom, I don't think you need any action for it. Yeah, selectmen who approve. Yeah, and I, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention just to, to let you know. What <laughs> so it'll be up to the board, the uh, WPCA board. And uh, I, I know Angus and I have spoken about this, and we're pretty comfortable doing the, the, the three million dollars. And uh, I, I think we're leaning toward the uh, putting that into. Uh, I'm, I'm more comfortable with the liquid I, I, as much as the, you know. The extra, you want to get as much as you can. Um, I'm not comfortable locking them on yet. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I can't say I'm not comfortable, but I prefer to keep it. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing all this work. <laughs> no. If it's liquid now and the rates go up, you want to 
Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We right. can we can pay attention to it. I, I, I'm actually I'm, I'm kind of thinking the rates on these are going down. Yeah, but, yeah that's why I really want to say. So probably mm -hmm. so unless we unless you want to put it into a, a CD, no, you no, think no, the I, rates are going down. I agree with you. I think that we're. In. But you know, I just like to be transparent about everyone know what's going on. And if someone's just adamant about you know, what I'm recommending, then let me know. But we did one wire transfer this month from August 21st to 925. The transfer amount was a uh, million two hundred fifty thousand on September 7th. Uh, that was from the Liberty Bank money market account to the Citizens mm -hmm. Bank. Uh, General funds to, to cover uh, accounts payables. Uh, our ECS monies, that's the education equalization grant monies. Uh, we uh, will have three allocations uh, for this, this fiscal year. Uh, the total amount will be a million six hundred and sixty nine thousand six forty six. So the monies are doled out uh, in three different increments. Uh, we receive a quarter of that total. On October 31st, which will be up 417,411.50. And then January uh, 31st, we'll receive the uh, same amount. And then the large one will be in April. We receive half of those monies, which will be 834,813. Um, so I took that right off of, uh, I was looking at our. And we call revenues. But we got fifty-six thousand dollars in from the ECA, which I do not believe is correct. Not no, we don't. And you know, I did notice on this report too that you know, because I was looking at the short-term investments, and there's nothing. Didn't have any in there. No, it doesn't have anything, and that's for the last three months. So that was July, right. August, and September. Certainly on our agenda to yeah. talk about finance. Um, how we're, how we're addressing the plans. Just going to go over just real quick uh, our bond issues. Uh, you know, right now we've got there four bond issues. We actually paid off uh, Deep River Elementary School boiler, uh, which was uh, paid off in uh, uh, July uh, for $28,571. So that was for seven years at $200,000 at 2.750%. So that's gone. So now we have uh, four four continuing here. Uh, one is the sewer construction bond, uh, which is uh, with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA. Uh, that was the Clean Water Fund project, and that was uh, for originally $3,375,000, 375, um, and that was uh, actually for 20 years. Uh, our next payment uh, due is uh, 930, and once we make that payment, we'll, our, our uh, balance will be down, picture of the balance will be down to 510,627. So it actually matures on uh, 430, 2026. Uh, we have 31 payments that remain. Uh, if you look at the total amount of interest and the principal, uh, by when we pay this off in full, we will have paid $4,059,066. We'll include the interest uh, added on to the 3375000 uh, the second one is the Kirtland uh, River Street Sewer Project uh, through USDA. Uh, that's that was originally for two million nine hundred ten thousand at two point six two five percent rate for forty years. Went from two thousand goes from two thousand sixteen to two thousand fifty five. There's an annual uh, principal and interest payment of one hundred eighteen thousand three seventy nine. That will be due on twelve seventeen uh, two thousand twenty three. So when that payment is made, uh, we'll have, uh, oh, let's see, I think uh, we'll have eight payments, uh, 32 payments left, we would have made eight, eight payments. And then we've got the Kirtland River Street Sewer Project expansion through USDA, and that opened in 2017 for 605,000, 2.25%, and that was for 40 years as well. That one is due, uh, the next due is 623-2024. Uh, and that went from 623-2017 to 623-2056. Uh, uh, the principal and interest payment on that is $23,099. So we've made seven payments, there's 33 payments left, and the balance is 533 
And the last one that we have is the capital improvements improvements borrow. That's the most recent one that was taken out with Dying Bank uh, for a million four twenty five. That opened up on uh, June eighth, two thousand twenty two. Fifteen year term at three and a quarter percent fixed interest rate. Uh, that one actually has uh, an annual principal payment of ninety five thousand dollars. That's due in August, and then an interest. Uh, uh, payment that's due uh, and plus plus interest. So it's ninety five thousand dollars plus interest plus another interest payment due on uh, February of each uh, of each uh, year. Uh, so that principal balance right now is a million two thirty five. So we've made thirteen payments. Uh, I'm sorry, we've made two payments out of, out of the fifteen years. So we still have thirteen payments so remain. Um, and I think I think that's it. What's the uh, what the elementary school do? Finish? Well, that was it's done. Is it, when's my day to do? What, uh, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Yeah, yeah, we just we just paid that off on uh, okay. July twenty ninth. It was originally for two hundred thousand uh, for seven years. So, that was that was Angus's first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, not my first one, but my well, first one. Just done. Yeah. Any questions for Donna? So we'll keep you up to date as to what we can do going forward. And, uh, I'll talk to yeah, you. I'll talk with you as the week goes by. I'll let you know about that. Meeting. Okay, good enough. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Uh, next, I would be one of the citizen. Tony, you're next. So not that you're not a citizen, but you're next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I hear you know a comment from citizens. We will have a, a citizen Tony. <laughs> You are in Don Tony is here again uh, Tuesday, but Tony's going to update us on discussion of online permitting for planning. It's, uh, so I'm going to kind of defer to Angus on this one because I actually haven't seen it in progress. I know they tested it. I don't know if it's up and running. Um, well, no, it hasn't been. All we did is we just got a good, um, a very good demonstration. Okay. No, it's not up and running. Okay. And then um just to kind of piggyback on that, I we did we did forward um because we talked last time we talked to you, we talked about raising the fees. Um so we, we put something forward where it raises all of our fees, well not all of our fees, almost all of our fees by five dollars to ten dollars. And a couple of them were so convoluted, um, like for a special permit, it was a hundred dollars plus fifty dollars per acre plus ten bucks dollars per square foot plus the DEP fee plus <laughs> So we we went through a lot of our fees, and so if you just do three hundred dollars plus the DEP fee, that would cover it. Ninety per, ninety percent in all rates. Yes, it's simplified, and it's it's a it's an actual increase of like twenty five bucks. Um, so there's a cost. that's with us comparable with other towns. That's all I was. Interested. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're um we're a little still a little behind Chester, but we're um Essex fees are actually a little lower. So we're, we're still kind of in the middle, but this this kind of put us in line with everybody else. We looked at Adam, we looked at Saybrook. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. All right. What is your estimated? It's the difficult. You have no idea how many people file fees, uh, file applications. Do you have any estimate? If you were to use last year as an indicator, how much additional revenue do you think we would have raised? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I don't I I think if you could multiply whatever the increase is. Um, I, you know, what did we get? 10, 10 applications this year? 15. I, I think that was a, a yeah. 10 is on the high side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a substantial amount of money and it's not designed to pay for this. The first year of this is paid for by the state grant. Right. After that, we have a, we have a year to year contract where we can determine whether or not we're, on, we're benefiting from it or not. But it is. We should get that. And, and the reason we held off moving forward is that Terry did hell of on the end. Yeah. I, I don't know which story when you got to someone that let them go forward with that. I kidnapped them. Uh, <laughs> I, want, I, I wanted to see if there was opportunity to increase revenues. I wanted to take advantage of it. Yeah. Now, how do we increase? We'll get to the more important thing. How do we increase fees? Do we have to go to the town to increase fees, or can we just say fees are in? So the fees are an ordinance. So yeah. then it's got to go to town meeting. It's got to go to town meeting. Okay. So we will put that on the things to do. Okay. So the math, I think we did one time we're doing it, like at best $2,000. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's about a $10,000 a year um, annual. All right. Let's go now. Let's go to the, the online. 
who wants to go to get the say the name company, it's like a cool name, best company or something. And what's the name of the, the <laughs> software that we'll be providing? Uh, Give me us. 30 seconds, because I had to get the, the actual name from John Toskowski. And then, of course, I didn't write it down in While we look my favorite. This was bid out. Here's the service we want, so it's not like we just pick Tony's best yeah. friend. It's smart to bid out. It is, and it was smart go by brightly so smart. smart. And that, uh, who wouldn't go with smart? <laughs> uh, so, and they gave us a bid. It's the only one actually submitted for bids, right? Yep. For several. Okay. Yes. Uh, and to your point, who wants to take it? First year was paid for by grant. The initial setup was paid for by a grant, yep. which you folks initiated. Yep. So there's no cost to the town to get it up and running right right and to run for the first yeah. year. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. Yep. So board of finance, there's no no one is asking you for any additional fees. <laughs> yep. And this steward got here. The steward is set up taking them from here. I was gonna say it also benefits, it's not just planning and zoning, it benefits the building department, the wetlands department. So right. um so the, yeah. it's, it's not just it, us. Actually, even the health department yeah, will really department. benefit from this. That's and, and more importantly. The departments will benefit, but more importantly, the public will benefit. It, mm -hmm. it, will, it will basically make a lot of the work that has to take place Mondays and Wednesdays between 9 and 12 a 24 hour opportunity to file an application. It, 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 I think that's the key mm -hmm. to it. it. It really follows the thrust of the grant that we got, which was given by the state during COVID to, to try to make it so people don't need to come into the town hall to do business. And in this particular instance, it, it is it really is an opportunity to open the town hall 24 hours to, to do permitting work. You can submit your whole application from the first page of the application to map maps. And more and more towns in that case. Can you submit maps? I think I have yeah, that. No, all be, be submitted digitally, which is going to free us up in a small town hall like this. Our space up there is very limited. Um, more, you know, we don't get them that often, but the last subdivision we had, it, it, it basically logs that you can use for fire for um, <laughs> well, plans rolled up. Mm -hmm. And there was eight of them or 12 of them that have to be submitted because every every member of the commission is entitled to them. So, um, yeah, so this is a good opportunity for us to provide more for our, our residents, to, to help our departments keep up with a tremendous inload of paperwork. And frankly, it once again puts deeper in the front. There are not a lot of towns around us that are doing it. I would suggest um, uh, Essex and Sabre are the closest. Chester does not do it. Killingwood does not do it. Hallam does not do it. Um, it it's, it's a good way for us to get in front of other communities. So when we talk about attracting people, mm -hmm. this is one of the things that, that could in fact help with that. Now, what it does mean, Board of Finance, is in next year's question, Tony is going to either ask or simply say, this is what we have, and it's a $10,000 fee. We are not committing to that. We will have to revisit that next year. Uh, Although we've got 10, we're in the process. It is a, it's an open question for next year. I'm, so going to not committed to yeah. I'm going to suggest that it's, while it's certainly convenient to throw this on planning and zoning, they are they are actually not the only mm. department that's going to benefit from this. And I, I'm, I'm going to suggest, I, I won't have the ability to enforce, but I'm going to suggest that this be part of the selectman's line. Oh, you put it this way? I, I think that's where it belongs because it's, um, it's not just planning and zoning, it's not just building, it's not just uh, health, it's not just, it's, it's all of them. Okay. Frankly, it's the assessor. So it's kind of like GIS, you threw that into the assessor's office because she actually has more public work with it. But planning and zoning, we do a lot. Uh, this one is all of them. And I'm going to suggest that building will actually get more use out of it and help will get more use out of it. But um can you explain that? Like what does the software do that will help? Well when we want let's say let's say you 
There's only four different examples, but maybe I can do it. With, maybe I can do it too. Uh, no, to show the difference. If someone needs to put a porch on their on their back of their house, they need to pull a building permit. Currently, you can while well, you can print the stuff out online, you can't submit it online. So you can go home, you can print it, you can file, fill all the paperwork out, and then come into the town hall between nine and twelve on Monday, or Wednesday, to to file that application and submit your fee. With this, you can do it all. You can do it all at home. You can submit submit the application and submit the fee simultaneously. So if you're working on a third, or oftentimes it's not the applicant, it's the builders. So they're putting all this together. They make the application. They can do it at any time. They can do it at the end of the day when they get back and they're back in their office, they can submit the application. So that's for building. Um, the, one of the opportunities for this is when someone submits a building application, that has to go to zoning to make sure that this is not going to um, violate any zoning regulations. And so the wetlands to make sure that it doesn't violate any wetlands submission. This software has the ability to show that zoning has looked at it and they click the button. It doesn't move past that until they click that button. Same thing with wetlands. So it, it expedites the application instead of having to sit and wait for each of the people to review. Um, if, if you're going for a zone a subdivision, you can do all of that. Your engineer can do all of that from his office okay. um, and submit all of the plans from their office. So it really does expedite um, and relieve the, the need to expand hours and the, the um, the need for people to take time away from other projects uh, to come here to submit this. Thing. So, for the town, is it an indirect revenue producer by eliminating town hall time, personnel time, uh, space, people? Space for sure. Space mm -hmm. for, for sure. Personnel, um, kind of. I, I think this is going to be very, very beneficial for us uh, five years from now when Dick Layton retires. And we need a building inspector, and we're going to have we're going to have a, a person. We're, we're, it's going to be a big search. Building inspectors are very difficult to find, um, and this can this can yeah. handle some of that yeah. online as opposed to having someone have to. So we could hire someone like Tyke, who does building inspection, and he can do it. Doesn't have to be in the office. He can do it all online, and then do the do his inspections, but he doesn't have to be physically in the office to manage the stuff. So the ten thousand dollar fee that they might possibly come back for next year would could possibly be reduced or not? No, that won't be reduced, but you'll see some benefit to it in other ways that that are not financial. You know, we won't have to increase hours for anybody, like you said. But more importantly, we won't have to increase um storage space, storage and space, and other facilities. That you know, lots of towns um, have a an annex somewhere where all of their documentation is so that they lose time, employees time, when they have to go pull files from somewhere else and bring them back here. We are we are out of space upstairs. So this is a, a good So it's not a money maker. It doesn't generate any revenue in actuality. It's a you know it's a benefit convenience. It's a benefit to our it's a benefit to our, our citizens. Um it's definitely a convenience to our citizens and that's that's how it benefits them. Um it does not generate revenue, but I think it generates interest in the community. And you know, you see, you see that we're a town that that, that is in the, as John puts it, the 21st century, um, and we're ahead of other communities in this type of thing. And we are well ahead of other communities in a lot of a lot of things. This this will be one more, which streamlines the application process. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we do. I'm sorry, I, I can get a little long-winded on some of my explanations. That's the actual answer. It streamlines the application process. And the software, or when these when this stuff is sent digitally, where is it stored? Are we going to server shop? It's all it's all in the cloud. Okay. In our cloud or in the server? In the government's cloud. Yeah. In, in the in <laughs> the in the the purveyor's cloud. I was just going to say that the other the other thing that I think um, well it's not just uh, so like let's say somebody does submit something to the building department and let's say God forbid we go back to COVID and John isn't here he can still sign off on that from home 
So, or if he's in Killingworth or wherever else he's working, and he and Dick Lake calls him up and says, "Look, this guy's been waiting a week. Can you sign off on this?" And he can check it and sign off on it. So it, it does again. It's yeah. streamlined. Yeah. For the stuff that's already here on paper, that be eventually that is that is part of the plan. Actually. That will be in fact. But that's another. Uh, we're actually searching for another grant to do that. Essex is doing that now on their own. Well, Saybrook is not doing that on their own to just digitize all the files. Um, but that's that's a big long <laughs> process, mm -hmm. and right now it's very expensive. So uh, we're reluctant to take that on right now until we find a grant that will do it. But it's possible. Right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely! It's not just possible. That's something that I think is going to need to be done. I I, I work. Um, I'm working with the state of Connecticut on a uh, on a proposal to allow for digital filing of mapping and things like that. And that's that's really where the state is going. Um, the attorneys in particular are really pushing hard to have everything digitally filed as opposed to paper. I, I oppose some of that, like the mapping, the town clerk's uh, documentation um, that should be paper. We need to we have these laws for a reason. But there are lots of good reasons to do some of it. <laughs> They're kind of with DMV now. You can register your car online mm. instead of going in. Yeah. Don't even get me started on DMV. Which dinner? So, people who filed a building permit in London, 25, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. it is still upstairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, still upstairs. I was wondering if there is a period of time that. No. Goes that stays that stays uh in perpetuity. Yeah, wow. Yep. Mm. Oh. It should be. It's a good record of how the town, how the property is going. Put it in the tank. All right. Does anyone have any questions of the Joni or Angus on this issue? No, there's no action yet on what we have to do. So. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think that brings us to recommendation of selectmen and action on recommendation. Okay. Tony, <laughs> <Lori. laughs> uh, Tony and Lawyer are here representing planning and zoning and uh, the Deep River Land Trust. Um, we just at, at our meeting had a long conversation about uh, the acquisition of a piece of property. And I'm probably going to make a mistake. One thirty-six Rattling Valley Road. <laughs> The pink, the pink piece. It's uh, two and a half acres up on Rattling Valley that connects to. If it comes down. To What's the name of the park? Canfield Woods. Canfield Woods. Canfield Woods. For some reason, not that block. I've never, yeah, I for some I've never reason, remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. So Canfield Woods down. all the way over to Crack Hole. <laughs> um, it's a, it, this, this piece of property connects Canfield to the other land trust property. <laughs> um, you guys probably remember. A month or so ago, we spoke about the creation of a fund, and, and I explained to you about the uh, the uh, payment in lieu of for, for, yeah, land bank, exactly. Um, this is incredibly fortuitous timing because now we have money that we can purchase, we can utilize to purchase this property. Lori and Tony will speak much more eloquently about the process of the ministry, but I just want to recommend uh, or to, to comment that it was it was a very uh, collaborative effort between the land trust, mm -hmm. planning and zoning, and they they actually acquired a couple of grants, one from the um, one from Gateway Commission and one from the Middlesex Foundation that totaled thirty five thousand dollars of a uh, eighty thousand dollars purchase. Now. Uh, because this money is held in a um, in a town account, it needs to go to town meeting for the purchase to go forward. Um, but remember, and, and I'll be telling all the people at the town meeting, this is not money that came out of tax money or anything like that. This is money that came from an application. It was part of an application for a subdivision. As part of that, rather than donating one fifteen percent of the land that was being subdivided, they they put fifteen percent of the portion of whatever the cost of that would have been into this bank, into this land bank. Um, and so it's money that statutorily we are required to spend only on the purchase of open space properties. Uh, and it's 
it really is a great piece of property that they can describe for you better than I can. So I'll leave it to you guys to do that. I was going to say, I, 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 all I was going to say is that, um, like I said, like I said in the last meeting, when I first met Lori, I, we were talking about making interconnectivity because um, that's a big part of the POCD. And this piece of property specifically, I was like, look, Lori, if this ever, this is like the linchpin. If this ever happens, and lo and behold, you know, a couple of years later, just like you're not going to believe this, this property is for sale. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm overly excited about this and. and Lori can tell you more about you know why it's such a good piece of property besides just being a lynch. Yep. So what he said, what he said, <laughs> plus <laughs> um, this property is part of the watershed for uh, Pratt Cove, which is an internationally important water body through um, internationally through Ramsar, which is a, a multi-country agreement that these tidal wetlands are important for a bunch of reasons, ecological mostly um, habitat reasons. Uh, um, and so for that reason, Nature Conservancy owns some property on Pratt Cove, uh, right adjacent to our property um, and along the cove. And um, the Gateway Commission was compelled to con uh, contribute to this sale for that. You know, that was the major reason for their contribution. This little two and a half acre piece is mostly wetland. So it's mostly, filtering water that goes into Pratt Cove and then goes into the Connecticut River. Um, it's like a sponge. And um, we, uh, and coincidentally, this little sponge connects <laughs> our property with Canfield Wood. So um, it's very simple to walk across uh, Rattling Valley Road, get to the this little two and a half acre property. And it's like oh, 200 feet maybe to, um, get up to the red trail, which is right here for Canfield Woods, and then you can walk all the way to Essex. So um, we, so for that reason too, we, we um, spoke with the Essex Land Trust, we partnered up with them. They came to a couple of our land trust meetings to talk about like strategy on fundraising and maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're really excited about that too, because we've collaborated with the, uh, the land, Essex Land Trust, the town, the Gateway Commission um, and this other contributor of funds is the Connecticut, I'm sorry, the Community Foundation of Middlesex County. And they have a fund called the Janvrin Fund, which are two sisters who have, have a fund of money that they give to uh, land preservation <clears throat> and also projects that are related to habitat, habitat preservation. They were birders. So they wanna, and this is a no brainer for mm -hmm. them too. Um, <laughs> so, as Angus said, we got 20 from the Gateway, 15 from the Jandron Fund, and $35,000 to put towards this purchase. Um, what else can we say about it? What's the cost of them? It's 80000 Which the county will put up? We're gonna, I'm, we're gonna ask, I'll, I'll, actually, as soon as it's actually done, I'll tell you the motion that we move forward. I don't, I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> I don't think but so. if you have questions, because I... So is it not a usual lot? You know, so it, 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 it would yeah. be hard. I mean, you'd have to... There's a huge wetlands crossing. You could probably build in the back, but, I mean, it would be yeah, a real struggle. Yeah. So is it overpriced then? No. It's underpriced. Yeah. For a non-buildable lot. <clears throat> yeah. So this is the trail that goes from Pratt's Cove where everybody parks in the parking yeah. lot and goes up by the water. That's our property now. Okay, yes. that trail doesn't go anywhere. It's like how it to the not end, it sort of ends in house. Oh, it, well, so you have to go on the trail that is is marked with yellow blazes. And I'll, I'll give you the map and you can keep it. Okay, so this is um what you're talking about, what you did, a lot of people do and make this mistake. Yeah, um, and you wind it's not a mistake. Backyards. You're following this trail here, which okay. is on the Nature Conservancy's sure. property. But if you come over to where the sign is at Rattling Valley Ridge, you can. there are yellow blazes, plastic blazes that you can follow that'll take you all the way up over the ridge. You can do a little loop, come down to Rattling Valley Road, go back. Oh, that's so cool. And now if we get this piece, you'll cross the street, you can go to Campfield and- yeah, yeah. That's that's Yeah, I think it would be across from practical. 
like if you wanted to access this. Yeah, you know, this is the big parking lot. Park Correct. Well, we might, not be able to, we might be able to not be able to put a couple of a space for a couple of cars. And also, we are thinking about our our Bidwell Preserve has an. Um, we could put more parking in there if we wanted to. We could clear out some of that and put in some more park cars. Is that by Mark Ryer's house that Bidwell? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right, right next door. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So clarify. It's eighty thousand dollars. We have thirty-five. And so that's where we're getting. That's where Angus. We're, 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 we need forty-five thousand to get to the eighty. Yeah. I'm asking the town for up to fifty, so that we can cover closing costs and any additional cost fees that go into the purchase. And where's the money that we got from that splitting of the land number? It's in the fund. It's in the fund that we're going to take this from. And how much is there? Uh, there's 160 in that. Oh. Now. Which has to be spent on the city. It has to be sent on the city. To yeah. me, it's a it's a simple decision, but we right. have to go through the process. Yeah. Right. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. What's on either side of the particular house? Houses on both sides. So there's yeah. actually buildings. Yeah. Again, they're set in the back because they had they were across the wetlands. They, they I think those both houses predated well. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm That's not I'm not, I'm not 100 percent certain, but I know that some negotiation before this came available to us. Was taking place with some of the property on it. Um, the folks really wanted to go ahead. I think this is a great idea. I just have one more question. What would we use for tax base if this were to come up? You know that one? It's a couple. Um, Laura, we talked about it. dollars Yeah. It's um, a, I think it's a couple of thousand, twenty to twenty three hundred dollars yeah. a year. $1,033.25. One thousand. That's. It's worth it. No, it's yeah. totally worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Um, so the motion that the board of selectmen made uh, is contingent upon your um, moving it forward too. But we have to go through th three things at the town meeting. We have to so through uh, we have to get the town authorizing the acquisition, acquisition, the spending of the funds, and authorizing. And this is something that we don't have to do, but I'm asking that we do uh, because the land trust really is not in the position to pay taxes. The property is paid up through January for taxes. But because of the timing of this, on October 1, our um, assessor puts a new, put, sets, a, sets a new date. And if you own the property on October 1, you need to pay that in July. We, um, I'm asking for the town to forgive that payment because just the timing of this there's going to be about a month before the closing. So there's going to be a month, month's worth of taxes on this. Um, so I'm asking the town to forgive the taxes. Is the that owner asking for that? Pardon? Is the owner asking for that? No, the owner, this is an estate. This is the, yeah. the owners are no longer with us. But, I'm just curious why we do it if it's not being asked for by the, by the estate because anybody else, if I decide to sell my house on October 15th, yep. I owe the taxes in July for October 1st through 15th. Mm -hmm. Because when the taxes are due, it'll be the land trust. Get a tax bill. They'll get the tax bill. That's all. I mean, with the estate. No, Jackie's Jackie's right. And we went through this. Yeah. We went through this once oh. before, um, where it was not taken care of in the negotiation, <laughs> and the land trust ended up having to pay some taxes on the property because they owned it for a few know, hmm. months. Um, that is something that that it's a good question. Um, it's about a thousand dollars. Thousand. 36 something. Yeah. Um, but uh, just to try to move this process along rather than negotiating further and I, and having gone through this once with the land trust already, I, I, talking with the attorneys, it's a, the, the easiest and simplest way to move this is to ask the town to forgive the taxes that will be due in July, which it totals about 1,036. But Again, that comes out of that same fund. So it's what it's for. So that's what we move. It's the yeah, go ahead. How many? So that's that's what we move to. No, that's that's the motion that's oh. going, we're going to the town meeting. Those three things are what we're asking for. Okay. Um, 
for the Board of Finance. The state says it's responsible for all financial and tax all financial activities of town. We need to agree. We will send this to a town meeting to the three things she just indicated that uh, we will let's see if I can do it correctly. We'll take the fifty thousand out up to fifty thousand out of the fund uh, to expend those dollars on land mm -hmm. uh, and to your word waive or to uh, something the future taxes. Forgive we don't look at forgive future taxes from the period of October one, which would be on our new tax um, rolls. And the day we take I think it, I think it is because that's um, that's what that's what we'll be doing if the ownership stays. Okay. So we we'll divide that back date. Divide that by six. Back date to purchase to uh, for the okay, whatever it is. It's not all <laughs> I guess we confuse people like this. <laughs> I, I don't. Is tomorrow sounding? No. No, 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 no. There's this no is, time. No. So this is just bad time. I, I actually learned about the timing on this. Last Thursday. So. When will the consummation of all the purchase take place? In mid October? So right now, the, the closing is planned for October 30th. Um, if, if everything goes the way I'd like it to, we will get this notice and we'll have the town meeting for this on the, immediately following the, um, the board of second meeting on the 10th of, of October. Okay. If not, we'll just. You know, we may have to push it back a week because of publishing and all the things. All right, board of finance. Somebody, do I have as uh, anyone like to put all those things into a recommendation? <laughs> we remember it. All those things laid out. All those. So I have a, this series first. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Say, oh, well, actually, I guess we should have done any further discussion. Okay, just pass. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> additional recommendations. I don't really. Um, we are right. going to have you. to talk about the, uh, what we do with the fire truck that we just replaced. Um, we need to do that before the snow starts to fly. So we're going to have to do that relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. we, we, right now, we have three options. Um, the one is to sell the truck. Sell the truck. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have two offers on the truck. The highest offer is five thousand dollars from collectors. Um, the next option is um, there's a there's a group out of Chicago who um, are shipping emergency equipment. Similar to fire trucks, ambulances, police, have any any emergency apparatus, are shipping them over to Ukraine uh, to help with because of, I guess their emergency vehicles are being uh, targeted. And the next option is I've been working with a group called Brothers Helping Brothers, which is a group somewhere in the Midwest who work trying to uh, find communities that need apparatus. Here in the states, and um, and get get them apparatus like ours that still per perfectly functioning, just um not appropriate for for Connecticut for us for here. Um, all those options are on the table. Um, they're you know five five dollars five thousand dollars. It's, it's it's money for our coffers. Um, but there's also the opportunity to do some good with something that I think we can afford. For our community that, that needs it, whether it's Ukraine or, um, or someone in the States. Um, we need to make that decision soon because we don't have a place for the truck. Does the Board of Finance have to act on this? We're going to send it to town. We're selecting the town. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we can send it to town, I think. And you try to send it to a town meeting as opposed to doing it. So. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that this has this is property. I'm checking that out. Before. It's property of the town. I think it needs to go to the town meeting, and it, it, whether it needs to or not, I think it should go because there are there is a decision to make. Does fire have any recommendations? They have not recommended one way or the other. I kind of believe that they want to sell it mm -hmm. because um, I don't know exactly why, but um, I think I think that they would prefer to sell it. I, I think. You know, some of it came up. We don't want to sell it, so it gets parted out. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to donate it, so parts get 
scavenged and sent all over the place. And that's not what I want to do. I want someone to take a, a truck that works and have you a truck that works. You know, use it. I think there's, uh, if you go by mileage, this truck's got another 70,000 miles before it really hits 100. So, I don't, I have no idea. The, the, the trucks they have no value except for the collectors. used fire trucks are albatrosses out there, unfortunately. It's at least that's, that's the yeah. experience. I've only been around for I think because of the ocean, the open cap, the open cap takes it. was like an action sparker. So it's really more of a collector's item. That, that's why. That's why I wanted to collect lots of One of these stuff is really nice. Like, the five, the five thousand dollar offers by a collector that really wants it because yeah. it's an open cap. It's an open cap. Yeah. I know there's that website called Heart that sells emergency mm -hmm. vehicles. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that because that yeah, it's uh, you know it's like an auction. Like Cold Heart's a big auction. I know a lot of municipalities now, mm -hmm. sell their, like even the state, they used to sell their food just behind right. all the vehicles and weather's wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now they all go on Cold Heart and taxi cab companies outbid each other to get them. I don't know if that would, you know, bring in more money. It'd be a cool taxi ride. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I'll look into it. What's the thing again? Cold Heart. Cold? C-O? C-O-P. C-O Heart. Yeah. Okay. Cold Heart. Yeah. It's in New Britain. Okay. And they're all over. All yeah, they have like yards in New yeah. and Park. Yeah. Park. I didn't see that in my mind. So if they sell it, where's the money get distributed? Go to the dental fund. Was it initially back in the minutes agreed or said that it would be sold to God and put towards the Austin? Austin no. Okay. Not that I'm. Not, no, I don't. I don't know. Know. So. Well, there was a lot of any thoughts where you'd like to see it go, and that's all I used to ask. Any thoughts? That, that's exactly all I was yeah. asking. What you think about it? Of those, would you give three options? Three yeah, options. Yeah. Anyone have any preference? I made the most, I would say, mistake. Somebody jumped on me a little bit. That five thousand. I said five thousand is a lot of money for the town of New York. You know, five thousand is five thousand because I think the library library was there, and we could use that toward windows of the library, but. I personally think that if we can get some good PR, donate it someplace. You know, I, that's that's just my personal opinion. And whether you agree with the war in Ukraine or not, there are people that need fire trucks and they need they need stuff like that if we elect to go that way. Again, four or five thousand dollars, in my opinion, for the town. You know, it's it's money. Well, but if, it's, if it's going to the town, our opinions are not significant anyways. Well, they are and how we yeah, what okay. we bring to the town. We're not gonna bring them. I don't. I don't anticipate. I've never certainly never brought a thing with three. You know, check the box if you <laughs> want, and then whatever, whatever gets that. I've never brought something like that. We'll make a decision. That's what we think is the best, and we bring it to the town. If the town says no, then we bring it back to the town with the, on other options. The quickest way to get rid of it is to sell. Bring the energy. That's right. And we get five. Now we still have to no, we still it's have to That's our promise. Then it's preserved. The history of Deep River gets preserved, and there's a lot of history on that fire truck that yep. I'm sure is sentimental. And you know, <laughs> well, taking it into pieces or risking transferring it somewhere where you don't know it's going to be shot up over in a war zone. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how the fire truck. I thought you asked the question. Well, I think that's the reason the fire. I think the fire department went to the sales aspect right away because they they look it stays together. It's they look at it as their truck. Exactly. It's the, it's the town's truck, but they look at it as their truck. And I know that the collector will, he won't rename it. He won't take deeper off the side. Collectors keep it the way they are. That's what fire truck name. collectors are. They they collect it. And if it goes to well, Copart, they will probably sell it off in parts. It could. I don't know. I, I, that's what it sounds like from the name. You have a very close connection to that industry. I know you do. Yeah. Yep. These are so cool. Unless it's inoperable, then they'll, then yeah. they'll piece it out. They'll sell them all and all that. Vehicle. But it could be bought as for the engine. You know, it's got the joint engine or whatever. It might like, be sold for the engine. Yeah. What if we sell it and take a percentage and donate it to one of those charities that you mentioned? I don't know, just to compromise. And... I think yeah, we're I, in a hurry just because winter's coming and we don't have a exactly. place to put it. I don't feel it'd be ashamed to have it sit out all winter and have a nicely preserved, well maintained truck looking wise sit outside all winter and it comes springtime. It won't look the same way, you know. I don't. I don't feel really strongly one way or the no. other. I, 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 
you know, I think five thousand dollars for a collector. You don't you don't know that he's going to keep it forever. It's, it's it was a five thousand dollar investment for him. Not a big deal. You don't know what's going to happen with it. Tongue in cheek, you know, the fire department worked pretty hard for the last five years to get rid of the damn. <laughs> Well, here's the fire truck that they're selling for five hundred dollars. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, no, they, they don't. There's not a lot of value. Yeah. If I had a bargain, maybe enough. I do, buy but it. I do. I, I do agree with Jim in the sense that you know we have an opportunity. We're a town that, while we have a lot of struggling citizens, we're a value. We're, we're a town that that is well to do compared to quite a few communities around the country. And um, I, I don't think the cost of this, you know, take, making a donation to a more a, a community that can really need something like this is worth exploring, which is why I'm spending some of that time doing that. I just think it's, yeah, it's a, it's the right thing to do if we have the opportunity to do it. That's that's all. I don't if the, if you or the board of selectmen or the town decides otherwise. That's it's okay with me. I just really I think all three options are good. They're yeah. all good options. They're not there's not a bad option there, short of we yeah. don't want anymore and send it to the scrapper. I That's not an option. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the truck works. <laughs> mm. If I had a if I had a barn big enough voltage wise, would it be better to sell it? Because one of the last cruisers actually went to the dog work, correct? Mm -hmm. So that was didn't get sold. It, it did get sold, then. The dog oh, word. Yeah. Yeah. Not the dog word, in the S6 but oh. I'm sorry, I missed the, what you, the first part. Of your One of the older cruisers, because if you go back and look at some of the minutes when new vehicles are requested, it's like, well, we'll take the old one and sell it because it's too expensive to maintain this. Right. We're going to sell yeah. it, get a new one, and we'll sell it. Mm -hmm. How many are getting actually sold or historically here for the past five years versus Less. going to the fire department, going to the town department? Mm -hmm. years? In the last eight years, we've sold two, and we have two now that we have to market. Well, I think we should sell it. We've just been on citizens, but yeah. Because I'm just saying, if you, hey, we need a new vehicle because the maintenance is too much, but then it's not sold, it just goes to another department. Mm -hmm. Still on the still, still, still on the maintenance, still on the books. Still still no, yeah, it's still getting repaired. Yeah, yeah, all those same crazy. That the fire department did a good job absorbing some of those vehicles over the years. Um, and actually, still using one that they got one year. <laughs> what it, it was really just a straw poll to see how you guys were doing. I can go with it. Okay. Come on, maybe. I did. Yeah. To sell it. I did. Yeah. Well, some states allow those trucks still to be used. Yeah. Just connect yeah. it. I think in a couple states don't. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's it for me. Yeah. Um, next one thing on our um, agenda is the monthly budget report, which goes from July 1 until September. Yeah, September. Uh, right behind that, and I'd like to combine the two of them, we go into executive session. There is enough going on. Did you guys vote on the uh, land acquisition? Yes. yes. Sir. Who Did made the motion? Nice Thank you. Okay. And that's going to be a second term session. We talked about the monthly budget. There's nothing much to do on the monthly budget. There's nothing to chat about what is taking place in our conference. I do have one question. Um, we had approved for the ARPA money um, help for the social services. Yeah. Did that person ever get hired? Just got a call and finally got an application. Oh, and that's nice. working on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is more detail. If you remember, we used to put on this is during during the year they did this. When did they do it? Just last week. So this is the budget. And when do they approve the budget? 
Oh, city middle time. Fifty-one million dollars is their budget. But how many times school? Thirty. All right, so let's talk. Anyway, let's focus. If you do have your financials there, I'd like you to glance at selectmen. I'd like you to glance. Wait. Are you going? Are you going to do a second session now? And you have to make a motion. Oh, we have to make a motion. I don't care. The fact that we've on our uh, agenda, God is there. My right. life, you know. Can I have a motion to the executive session? Will you will you invite the board of selectmen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, Don, I don't want to think of no. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to stop the recording. Jack and Carol. Yeah. In uh, we have just come out of executive session and we made uh, no decisions. Uh, we took no votes in the executive session. Uh, we will return to terms of the accurate word. Let us turn our attention to the monthly discourse. Um, does anyone have any specific question? Um, I believe there are some um, inaccuracies in this. It does not change anything we do. I just believe there's some inaccuracies in this number. For instance, if you look at revenues, it says we have collected all of our revenues to pay the uh, sewers. We have not yet. I believe if you go down to examples, I do not believe you should be discouraged. We're doing fine on what we're spending. But if you look at uh, a capital, it says we have spent, what, uh, $7,600 on uh, a new fire truck equipment. I believe that is an expenditure we approved last year. So I believe there are still things that are being sorted out here. Does anyone have any specifics? About it? Are we on expenses? Yes. I do want to tell you that if you are you're correct, I think there are there's some glitches in here, and Matt and I will. Work. And, and I, I think it goes to uh, Matt never did this as extensively as he is doing now, yep. and we should uh, anticipate some larger just little glitches. It's, it's my it's all good. Uh, just a quick question, and it's probably more language. So under election select education fees, I assume that professional development. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. can we be consistent? Because we're, we've changed it in the other categories. Uh, an excellent point. We changed it intentionally for that very point to make them all because they didn't go from the budget. What did we change? I'm so I don't look around. What did we call it? Professor. Professor. Okay. Professor. 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 That's correct. Okay. Is that still true with the. Uh, yes. Uh, we did change it here, right? Oh, it's on the other. Yeah, it is. The, the, uh, I, I give you comfort that we are people are working hard on June 30 financials. Some of those have terminology issues. Yes. And that's why I didn't jump. I continue to think that uh, the estimate that I gave you for about seven to eight hundred thousand dollars would be valid. Um, I'm just not comfortable to yet to have you look at that. We will look at that soon. No. I think next month Kelly will have that stuff for us. I know. It would be much better. Yeah, I hope so too. But I am comfortable that um, that number is for And you should be comfort that we are anticipating the surplus for the prior year and spending, asking the town to allow us to spend 150 of it on the road mm -hmm. tomorrow night. So I continue to think that surplus is adequate to cover that. Any questions on that? This so not good point at all. If you have no questions, I will uh, suggest that we move to other business. And uh, <laughs> while Jackie doesn't officially proclaim it, uh, there has been a question you asked me a couple times. Can we begin to meet at seven? <laughs> and I certainly have no problems with that. Yeah, Eleven are needed. I will say yeah. that in a meeting, in our meeting um, can we always count to the select the meeting? Being over? Well, I'll tell you what, when I began, mm. yes. In the middle? In the middle, no. <laughs> and permanently, yes. There were times when you guys were standing in all the way, person, started your meeting because we had already gone 
we ended up going an hour and a half for a board session. Just because mm -hmm. so, people various conversations. Things. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. If we can't the reason I ask is it seems like since I've been on, you're all totally your thumbs mm -hmm. for the last 10, 15 minutes. It's like, so yeah. it's not fair to do. Could we meet earlier? Make it easier for everybody. No, I, I listen. I we never changed this. When I was on the board of like, and Dick, Dick would pull the court for a half an hour <laughs> most of the time. You know, we would just shoot the breeze for a half an hour. Um, but there were times when it did go. I I, I can't tell you if we can or can't. If we do move it to seven o'clock. There will be there will be times when you're not able the board of selectmen can't participate with you. You'll have to go to another one to start. And we couldn't because it says we start at seven. We can't start at seven twenty. You can following the selectmen's meeting or something. You totally can. I mean, that might be. You have to talk with Amy or someone at FOI. I, I would suggest that you could schedule the meeting for immediately following the board of selectmen's meeting. That might be the way to do it, but I don't. Yeah. I don't know that for sure. Because it's awkward if we start the other room, right? Half, and but there is a desire to have us right. And, and you and know, especially with the TV cameras, you want to be. I mean, you want to be recorded. I, I, I think you want to be recorded. I think you should be recorded. Um, and if it's immediately after, and the uh, selectman's meeting only goes fifteen minutes, that's then, okay. Then, yeah, right. but then we still you have to wait till seven when it could start at six forty-five. You know, so. An interesting question. Need to follow the selection. Makes sense. Is it accurate? Is it intent? Is it exact enough that we can plan that? I don't know. That I would suggest that uh, I, I think it, if, you <laughs> schedule, no, if you schedule it at seven o'clock, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Most of the most time. of the time, I think so. Totally not. But I plan on coming to Delaware so I can clean and stir things up. <laughs> so, I don't know if I would probably see it. Uh, I know Jim's going to be right behind me. But, uh, but if we met at seven, does the order of business have to be important stuff done at like? I don't know if we trace that. If we meet at seven and half an hour early, <laughs> and there is business that needs to have the board of select been there. Can we do the other stuff first so that you can meet at seven and then still have the board of selectmen and participate when they're done with their meeting? Mm -hmm. In other words, does the agenda have to be followed in number We did not follow this one. The only thought is if we are reported doing for doing when I was or not. When I was first on the board of selectmen, we had a different agenda and we've changed it with the yeah. board the board the audience of citizens have moved up. So it, it can be changed. You can change in the meeting. You can change the order of things. I think the concern that I have, I, should, I think Bud shares the same concern. Number one, starting in the other room and then moving in here is a little awkward, at least, and uncomfortable. And if you start in there, you won't. You, however long you go in the meeting, will not be recorded. Right. And, so, and, and I think it's. I think yeah. board of finance and board of second should be recorded. And I also think with new selectmen, they should be in the board of finance meeting because yep. they're going to need to learn as well. It's a very, it's a very educational experience. I know that was for me. Right, it's a good, it's a good thought. Mm -hmm. And and I, I let's ask Amy if if you start late, is there a problem? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there is, but um, you know, if it happens on a regular basis, but, yeah. then we would have to ask. Right? Yeah. I like, I'll tell you what, going home early is a mm -hmm. good yeah, idea yeah. as far as I'm Especially in the winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially in the summer, so, when it's light out, it'd be awesome. Make a decision on which side. Yeah. 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 Make a recommendation. I have no problem moving it to seven subject to any overruling. Do we take that one out? Yes, that's perfect. Subject to town clerk approval. Yeah. Okay. Subject to what? Yeah. With the understanding, how we bring them back if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I want you coming in next week, 7 30, saying that's what you should do. All right, I need a motion to adjourn. Second. Hold on,